Hey, it's Holly. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you a really cool restoration technique that I just got my hands on. Um, there's a Polly Pocket collector who made some amazing stamping plates. Um, if you don't know what these are, basically they're these metal plates where you can put paint on them, uh, scrape off the excess, and then pick up the picture um, that are engraved into the plate and basically stamp them onto other things. So typically they're used in nail art, um, but someone clever decided that she was gonna make some with poly faces on them. And I'm going to show you walking through how I, <laughs> with multiple attempts, uh, managed to use this restoration technique so that I could get some dolls looking nice and sharp with new faces. Um, if you can see that. I also have another doll in my hand that uh, you will not believe how she looked before I had my hands on her. So um, she is now completely restored. So I can't wait to show you all of this awesome stuff. So let's just get started. All right, so let's start out by just talking through what I've got at my station here because I have stuff all over the place and um, I'll explain why I have each thing here. So first and foremost, let's talk about the plates. So there are three plates that you get when you purchase them. Um, if you're familiar with nail stamping plates, they basically are, I guess, stainless steel plates that you have laser engraved. And then basically we're gonna put some paint in here and scrape it off so that there's just up to the ridge, there's just enough there. Sorry, it's so hard with a mirror to do this. Um, and uh, and then we're going to basically pick up the paint that's in the little divots and transfer them onto the polys. So um, the lovely lady that made these, she has basically tried to find most of the poly faces and recreate them. And then she's added in some additional sort of fun or cute ones. So this first plate I'm showing you has the majority of the um, there's a little sort of female symbol up there, so the, the female figures, um, along with some additional sort of fun bonus figures she's written there. Um, the next one here that I'll show you is the male figures, followed by the uh, baby and child faces, and then a few more of the bonus faces. And then the last one is um, an angel pocket one. So. Angel Pocket was just kind of like the um, Bandai version of Polly Pocket. They were basically identical, but the figures had slightly different faces on them. They were a little bit more cutesy. I don't know. They were just a different style, I should say. Um, they're both very cutesy, but a, a bit of a different sort of more cartoony style to the face. And um, they were distributed, as far as I know, only in Asia. So. Um, if you've looked up Polly Pockets on places like eBay and you've seen Angel Pocket, they're not a ripoff, they're just the um, Bandai version. So those are the other faces that it came with. Now, for the purpose of today's video, I am going to be using the plate with the sort of poly faces on it. And um, that was the one that I showed you here. So I've determined what's kind of the closest match to the one that I'm going to be doing. And let me show you what else came with the kit before we do that. So aside from that, oh gosh, that's gonna be distracting. <laughs> Let's just turn that over. So aside from the plate, um, the kit also comes with this little stamp. So this is kind of just like a, a jelly stamp, if you can see that. And uh, you can actually pull the whole thing out if you want. So that stamp is what we're going to use to transfer the face off the plate and onto the poly itself. So that's the stamp. It also comes with a scraper for us to scrape the excess paint off the plate so that we can do a nice clean transfer. And then it also comes with um, a nail file. This is just a really tiny, I found that this nail file wasn't effective. So I instead am going to be using a new uh, nail file for this one. So that's what comes with the kit. And then what else you need to be able to do this is some UV gel. So specifically this is UV nail polish, like stamping gel that you would use. Um, so if you 
do your nails. Um, this is a nail lamp that specifically cures UV gel polish, which um, is typically what I do just because you get a little bit more wear and tear out of your hands if you have uh, UV polish on your gel polish, I should say, on your fingernails. So, um, so I already have this lamp. So if you don't have the lamp, you would need a lamp. Um, they are pretty cheap. I feel like I bought this off Amazon a few years ago for maybe like $20, $30 at most Canadian. So they're not very expensive. And then uh, you will also then need the polish. So I was only able to find two colors that I needed. <laughs> and this is probably partially a Canada problem. Um, when I purchased the plates from the North American distributor, she sent me a link to an Amazon page where you could get basically all the colors you would possibly need. But unfortunately, they didn't ship to Canada from that particular seller. And then on top of that, they didn't have the equivalent on Canadian Amazon. So I ended up buying these both actually off of eBay, I believe. Um, so this is a bright, orange UV gel and then the other one is black. Now most poly faces are either going to be black, there's a few black ones, um, orange for some of the figures and the majority of them are actually brown. Now I don't have brown but fortunately these two colors can make brown so I have gone ahead and I have mixed myself. Hopefully that color is picking up. I know it's so hard, everything is reflective. Um, but I've mixed myself a brown color there. So fingers crossed that that's gonna work. I haven't tried it with that yet. So um, I have tested this out, but uh, not with that. The other thing that you will need is some packing tape. Um, so just some, some clear, thin cellophane packing tape. So I have already made a few loops of that just so you don't have to hear me tearing this off the roll but that's another thing that's important to have. Now, in terms of keeping the space um, tidy and clean, a few other things that you may want before you embark on a project like this, um, somewhere to put your paint brushes so that is your paint brushes are dirty that you can just keep them away from everything else. I also have um, these, <laughs> these are actually hand sanitizer wipes, but they're just alcohol. So um, these are just alcohol wipes basically that come in a container. And then I also have some cotton pads. So you're gonna see me using this stuff um, as we go through this, but I just wanted to let you know that that's basically, that is everything that I've got here um, at my station. So to start out, um, I have two dolls. These are from the 1996 Jungle Adventure uh, playset. And I have one that is the original doll that has the correct face on it. Unfortunately, these two both came to me without a face or with like 90% of their face rubbed off. So I've gone ahead and I've cleaned that off just with rubbing alcohol to make sure that they are nice and clean. Now, the thing is when you're cleaning these poly faces, you wanna be really careful um, that if you're using something like rubbing alcohol, that you just don't get the excess um, paint around the face, right? You want to make sure you're getting just the face when you're rubbing off the remainder. So be careful not to get the paint coming off of her hair or any of the other parts that are painted. Just the face is what you want to get super clean. So um, for reference, this was the doll that uh, is with my complete set and um, that's the face that I'm kind of looking to mimic. So I've determined on this plate that it's likely, this one is probably the closest one. So sorry, it's so hard to do this with a mirror, um, but that's probably the closest one there. So that's the one that I'm going to be using. So to do this, basically I am going to take some paint onto a paintbrush. So I've got a, actually specifically for painting nails, which is great. Um, so I've got this paint on here and I'm going to be putting that onto my plate. But before we do that, I should actually just talk about the stamp for a minute. Um, I don't like fully understand this process to be clear, <laughs> but um, the stamp, you have to polish it and that's what the nail file is for. So effectively, 
um, part of the instructions is that you take a nail file and you do this to the stamp. Um, and again, this is kind of like a very rubbery, I, I honestly don't understand um, why I'm doing this, but I'm sure that there's a good reason and it works in the end. So we're going to do it. Um, if anyone uh, watching this happens to be like a nail tech and understands why I'm doing this, I'd love to have more insight on that, but that's what the instructions told me to do. So we're going to do it. So I've got that in there. Just making sure it's pushed in really well here. It is a bit of a finicky beast. Okay, I think, I think that's where we want it. Okay, once you've got it polished, whatever that means, you basically you're just buffing the top with the nail file. Then you take your packing tape. So I've already put some just on loops and basically you're just pulling off um, any of the, I guess, residue from the top that you've created when you did the buffing. So that cleans that off. And now we're ready to start painting. So let's get our plate out. So again, we've determined that we are going to try to use this one here. So I'm going to take some of my brown paint that I've mixed up and we're going to put that onto the plate. So you don't need a ton, which is nice. Um, and if you weren't having to mix colors like I just did, you wouldn't have very much waste doing this. And that's the nice thing. So I'm taking this here, scraping it off. And this is where I am using, um, I have some little pieces you can either use cotton or paper towel and I'm just kind of wiping the excess off as I do this and I found that um, this seems to work best if you scrape it a few times and you scrape it at least once each way so now that I've got the excess off of that side I'm just going to come back this way And just to show you what that looks like. So now that there's all this extra stuff on the side, that's where you can come in um, either with a cotton pad, which is my preferred method of choice or some other kind of cloth. And you're just wiping the excess away and it doesn't need to be perfect, but you're just getting the, the majority of the goopy part away. So you can see that there's still definitely residue on either side, but that doesn't matter. Okay, so now that we've got that, we've got our stamp ready to go. Um, now I'm going to take this and I'm going to just be picking this up. So basically you just do a little movement and it's on the stamp now. If you can see that, it is so small there. So I actually don't love <laughs> I got it a little bit too much on the side so you can just pick it up with the tape the good news is you don't have to do at least as far as as I'm aware um, you don't have to do that whole buffing step every single time um, but I have been doing it kind of every few times that I've tried this so we're just gonna do that one more time It's looking pretty good. And again, I'm just going to grab my wipe and just pick up the rest of that stuff that I had on there. Just the excess. That's what I'm left with. Okay, going in with my stamp again. got it on there. Can you see that? There you go. Okay. So now I'm going to take that 
and I am going to transfer it onto her face. Now the nice thing is that because the stamp is pretty clear, you can see what you're doing for the most part. And I will say that I didn't pick up amazing face this time. So we're gonna do this again. But here is the result of that first attempt. Isn't that amazing? So in the instructions, she says that you should stamp this somewhere else first, like stamp it onto plastic and then stamp it on the face. Um, I've had mixed results with that, to be honest. I have found that um, sometimes it just took too much paint off. So um, trial and error, and it might just be that depending on what kind of um, gel you're using that you may or may not need to do that but I'm just going to gently wipe that off. So the good news is that this is low commitment because if you do make a mistake, you can just gently wipe it away and try again. You just need a little bit of cotton and you can start again. So back to this, we're just gonna clean this back off. It's been a few times, so I am going to just quickly give it another buff. Again, would love to know totally why I'm doing this, but I'm trusting the process. All right. So we've got that done. Um, we're gonna start that again. So in between uses, um, she recommends that you use like either acetone or alcohol to wipe the plate clean. So what I've been doing is using one of my alcohol wipes to get it clean. And then just taking cotton to, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> don't mean to make these horrible squeaking noises. Um, Clean that off. Okay, so we're gonna try that again. So another round of paint. Finding our scraper, there it is. I'm just wiping the excess off, bear with me. that's ready for us to go in with the cotton. It's looking beautiful. We're gonna come back in with the stamp now. So there it is. All right, hmm. I'm sorry, I am a perfectionist, so I'm gonna try. <laughs> Try that again. I sometimes I find that you just like don't get enough transfer, and so the face looks kind of weak. So I'm gonna try that again. Good. Wipe that off with the cotton. There's our result. Coming back in with the stamp. Okay, that looks a bit better to me. So now I'm basically it's so hard to see this and I'm sorry that I can't get a better view of this, but 
Hopefully you can see that you can kind of see the face right through the center of this. So basically what I'm doing is I'm lining that up directly over Polly's face. And then from the bottom to the top, I am rolling it up. So once you feel the one on the head on this doll moves, <laughs> which is half the battle. And then once you feel like you've got that on there, look at her, she looks so good. Okay, I am actually super happy with how that turned out. So um, again, in the instructions, she says that you should stamp it on hard plastic first. I've just found, I don't know if it's just the gel I have. I haven't needed to do that. And when I did it, it made it more blurry. It's supposedly supposed to make it less blurry. I guess it just depends on what kind of materials you're using, but um, I am super happy with how that turned out. So the nice thing is that once you feel good about how it's aligned, that's when you can put it into the UV lamp. So we are going to let that go into the lamp and then um, we'll see how it turns out. So let's go ahead and get that in there. And then we're gonna come back in a few minutes and see how she looks. So there she goes. Okay, so it has been two minutes here, whoops. And here is our result. So once you've got it on the face and you've done the UV, basically you bake it in there and that is now permanent. So that looks pretty amazing. Um, just to show you what the original looks like. So uh, it is a little bit different. So my color there has a little bit more orange in it. So what I've done is we're gonna do this one more time with the other doll and I'm going to make two changes. Um, I'm just going to have a gander at the faces again and see if there is something that I think is closer. But I think the one we were using was pretty darn good. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with that one. I'm gonna try this time. Um, I've mixed up just a little bit darker paint color for this one and I am going to try putting the stamp onto the plastic before I stamp on the face just to see what kind of difference that makes. So we've got that done. I'm just going to polish this dry here for a second. So it's it's pretty amazing because I mean it, it does give you a, a very good result. So this is a bit of a darker brown that I've put together. I mean, ideally you'd find something that's just the right color so you don't have to mix it, but again, supply issues. Okay, so I'm going to clean my stamp up for a second. There we go. Okay. It always kind of like awkwardly comes out. There we go. Okay, I think that's pretty good. Now we will scrape this off and I'm just gonna move this here so I don't dip my elbow in it. There she is. There's her face. Okay, let's try to pick that up. Gosh, this stamp is a little finicky. Okay, I didn't love that. And 
I find sometimes getting the, the transfer is like the hardest part, so. And I think it's, even though I'm like struggling over here, I think it's important to show that because sometimes this takes a lot of practice to like get something right. Okay, so we've got that all cleaned up. Ooh, that was a beautiful scrape. Beautiful, okay. Again. Okay, this is an awesome transfer. Um, now I almost hesitate to do this, but she says that you should just once do that. <laughs> Looks so beautiful out there. And now we're going to take our other plain faced poly here and try to line this up. She looks pretty good, but again, I don't, if I were to compare the two, I wouldn't say that that was like a huge difference. Let's just try that again. Okay, I'm finally happy with one. <laughs> so this color is really close. It looks really close to the original. Um, so I'm super happy with this color that I've blended up. So I'm going to go ahead and I am going to commit to this poly and stick her under the light. She looks beautiful. So in she goes and she's gonna be in there for two minutes. Now, now that we've done that, <laughs> I'm just glutton for punishment here. I have another Polly that I am hoping to fix up and she's fallen, so let me grab her. There she is. So this is from uh, the 1994 Pony Riding Compact, um, which if you, um, I don't think I've done a video on it, but if you had a Polly collection, it's the small yellow compact that's shaped like a horse's face. So if you've seen that one before, um, really tiny, it just came with one uh, poly and one horse. But as you can see, this one is in absolutely rough shape. So I'm hoping to get, <laughs> uh, hopefully it won't take as long, um, a new face on this poly as well, and then paint her up so that she looks a little bit better because she is missing a ton of paint. So let's go ahead and get this one rolling and hopefully I have figured out the magic sauce for this one here. So
Okay, so we've got that there. Just cleaning off my stamp. I have now affixed tape to the frame of my light box here just because it's a little bit more efficient. Okay, going in. And I picked that up. That one, I think I just pressed a bit too hard. She came out a bit blurry. We're gonna do that again. And it looks like our other one is almost ready. I'm just gonna give her another minute in the light. Um, two to three minutes is what is recommended by the lady who made these plates. So that's what I'm rolling with. It usually takes about two minutes to cure most gel. So that makes sense. Pretty darn good. I'll we'll just get this all wiped up. As you can see, I've just like now officially skipped to just using alcohol. I don't know if that's helpful or if I should be using the cotton pad, but it seems to be working out for me, so I'm gonna stick with it. So let's try to pick this face up. So I just didn't use as much pressure that time it's pretty good. This one's challenging because she has quite a fa um, face. She has quite a hat to her and I can't bend her legs because her legs on this one, they open sideways. Um, so with the other one, I was bending her legs back so that I could get better leverage on the stamp. But this one, I can't do that. So I have to be a bit creative with how I'm going to hold her. Probably just hold her by her head. Hey, that's pretty good. <laughs> she looks pretty great. Okay, she's going in. We're sticking her in the light. Um, the other one is done and dusted, so she is looking fantastic. I am super happy with my result on that one. So um, here are the three of them all together side by side, but I will say, um, so that being the original one there, they look pretty great. So this is, um, this is really cool. And I think with more practice, um, I'll only get better at it. So we're done those three ladies. So while we're waiting for her face to cure, um, I'm going to pull out some of my paints and see if we can't replicate some of the paints. So this is what the figure looks like um, in decent condition. This is the one from my complete set. The other one being obviously a duplicate. So I'm going to go ahead and clean my stamp off and just clean this up so that we can put that all away. So I'd love to hear in the comments, what do you think of these plates? Um, I, they do have a learning curve and that's for sure. And I think anyone that does like nail stuff knows that anything related to nails usually has a bit of a learning curve to it. But um, you know, with some, with some practice, I think anyone could get pretty good at that. It just does take some practice. So just be aware that if, if you're going to try that out, Take a moment to be patient with yourself before you get started. So we've got this here to clean up. Um, I am very lazy and I'm sure that this is probably not how we're supposed to do things, but I have been just cleaning these brushes off with alcohol as well. So um, just to get the UV gel off of them. But I have found that that works pretty well. Those are good. Here she is with her beautiful new face. Isn't she wonderful? Okay, so she's looking better already. 
Um, let's just clean this up a bit. <laughs> I hope I'm not giving anyone anxiety with <laughs> the way I'm doing this, but um, I'm just being lazy, to be honest. So we have, oh my gosh, I've got stuff everywhere. We've got um, those first two dolls all tidied up. Now let's see if we can't give this doll a new fresh life with some new paint. So I'm gonna break open my paints. I have a number of different paints um, that I purchased um, with the hopes of doing this at some point. But I'll show you what I've got. Um, this one is white. So um, I'm specifically, I am using um, Tamiya color paints. Uh, I believe these are from Japan. Um, and I bought these from a model paint store. <laughs> model, model supply store maybe is the word I want to go for. Um, I got a number of different colors. This one is a gold, um, a few whites, orange, pink, just things that I could likely mix into what I needed. So I also have there a blue, although I think this blue is clear that I can probably mix that into the white to get what I need. Um, and what other colors does she have? Maybe I will use some of this lighter green as well and some of the yellow. We'll see how we do. Um, I am by no means an artiste, but I'm going to, um, for the sake of the camera, turn the camera off for a moment and mix some of these colors up. And then I will be back uh, once I have them, I believe at least as close to ready as I have them. Okay, friends, so I have gone ahead and I have mixed up um, some paint colors here and <laughs> we'll see how I do. Um, but I'm, I think I'm gonna start with the shoes and then work my way up and we'll just see how far I can get into this here. So, um, so I have, again, I'm using, they are an acrylic paint um, from Tamiya. Um, they also make enamel paints, but I am specifically using an acrylic one. Um, just because that's what I have a little bit more experience with. But again, I am by no means an artiste. We're just learning as we go here. one of her feet painted there. So I'm just going in on the um, corner here and just cleaning this up. And I'm gonna see, I might even be able to zoom in my camera a bit more so that you can see this a bit better. Bear with me. Okay, I think that's where that goes. So <laughs> hopefully you can see that a bit better. So I've got her feet Paint it up. There's a little spot there that I want to get. So these are really high quality paints and um, that's personally why I chose to use these ones. Um, I just want to make sure that everything has like a super nice finish to it because in my opinion, what's the point of restoring something if you can't do a good job? So, <laughs> um, so we're going to Try to keep the um, stuff that we're using to be as nice as possible. Now this figure, like I just, I can't even believe how bad the condition is. And I have to look <laughs> at the other one to see where the paint stops and starts because it's literally, it's that bad. So. So closer to her ankles though, she needs a little more TLC. And so I'm using, this is like a super fine brush. And I hope, I just hope that I have the hand control to do this because 
I don't have the most stable hands. And people that do, I feel like that is such a gift. One of the nice things about painting here in my light box where I film my videos is that we have amazing light going on. So I'm blessed with that. Okay, and I am just seeing here, I missed a spot on her foot as I say that, ha ha ha. I am probably giving someone massive anxiety doing this. I'm so sorry, but this is the way I am, okay? <laughs> So there's a spot on her foot there. She is looking so good. You know, I kind of regret not doing this sooner because um, this looks amazing. Okay, so now that I've got that painted up, I am going to attempt to do her body with some white paint. Oh my gosh, the paint's already drying. Look at that. Gotta work fast with this stuff. So she, I don't know like what happened to her, but she's like super dirty and I couldn't clean it off. I tried scrubbing her and short of just like taking acetone to her, which I didn't want to do because that can kind of eat away at the plastic. We're, we just kind of got it as best as we could and I'm painting over top. nice thing is that there's just like enough remnants of paint in some areas that for the most part I can see exactly where I need to start and stop but I do have to keep looking back also at the same time at this model here <laughs> to make sure that I'm not like totally missing something She looks borderline new. Um, <laughs> so she's gonna need a second coat of the white. I can just tell you that right now. Now we have to see if I'm not sure how to hold her. Normally I would just let her dry, um, but I'm impatient today. So we're going to do her hair next. So the colors are pretty close. Um, I will say, I think I went just a sh like a slight, slight bit too dark on the purple, but the rest of it seems to be bang on. So that's really nice. Okay, she is looking amazing. Um, I am so happy with how this is turning out, so bear with me um, while we get this hat painted up. She does need another coat on her t-shirt though because her t-shirt was so dirty. Um, but it's almost like I had to prime it <laughs> and then I have to go back in and actually like properly paint it. And I'm just getting under. <laughs> I might have to go back in there with yellow in a minute to clean that up, but make sure we got all of her hat. Oh my gosh. Okay, I am super proud of this actually. Um, because she looks so good. How 
is the bottom. Oh my gosh, it's like, it's already dry. Wow. Okay, let's just clean up the white a little bit and then she's gonna be good to go. So I am loving this paint because the finish is super smooth um, and it kind of like fills in any impurities, which is really nice. Um, hopefully that makes sense what I'm saying like it this looks great okay let's just clean up her hair here all right we did it look at her oh my gosh she looks amazing. I have to let her dry a bit, but here is uh, a, an original one. And then there is our freshly painted one. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Okay, I am so happy with this. Like I, like I can't even explain how happy this makes me to have, uh, makes me really get the focus. Look how great that is. She looks amazing. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? Um, is this something that you would try with your figures? Um, I am so happy. I feel like this one just has like a brand new life. So I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments. What do you think of this restoration that I've done on this doll? Okay, so I'd love to hear your thoughts. Obviously um, it's not perfect and it takes a lot of practice and getting the colors right and getting things sharp, it's, it's gonna take a lot of practice, but I am so happy with how these turned out because they look so good. Like, honestly, that looks so good. And can we just talk about how rough this Polly looked and how amazing she looks now? Like, this is so wonderful. Like, look at, look at her shoes. Like, she's, she looks so good. I am so, so happy with how that turned out. So um, just feeling like a renewed passion and trying to restore some things because, you know, if, if stuff is in really rough shape, it, at some point it's kind of past the point of no return. And while I don't typically touch up my dolls, things that are just past the point of no return, it's like, well, if they just don't have a face anymore, let's put one on. Or, you know, if they're completely missing paint, we can paint them, you know? So um, for those dolls that I feel are kind of past that point that they're salvageable, um, this is something that I look forward to to doing and, and, you know, trying to get some stuff looking as close to new as possible. So let me know in the comments, um, what do you think? Should I do more videos like this where I fix things up? Um, how do you feel about the stamping? I, I'm pretty happy with it. If you've seen my other video I did a while back, I did a video where I showed sort of like it was a decal that you could put onto the face and that one worked pretty well. Um, but obviously that involved then having to put a clear coat on top and this is just baked right onto the face. So I love that. I love that I can take my nail and I can scratch at that and like nothing bad is happening. So I'm pretty happy. I think that's I think that's really cool. And I will also say the quality of these Tamiya paints is pretty amazing. I don't know if the camera will pick this up, but the finish on the back of these, like it is a perfect smooth finish on the bottom of her feet. Like it really, everything, it just, it's not lumpy. I am so happy with how this turned out. So um, yeah, let me know your thoughts. Um, I always love to hear your comments. I need to get in the comments <laughs> and answer some of your comments. Um, I've been really overloaded with work the last few weeks. You can probably hear my voice is about to go. Um, but also at the same time, I'm trying to do some new techniques with Polly's. Um, so yeah. Anyway, if you're, uh, if you have not hit subscribe yet, please hit the subscribe button. It helps out so much. Please also like the video. Um, it really, really helps the channel out. 
If you're on Instagram, please feel free to come connect with me over on Instagram at Pocket Vintage Toys. That's where I share all of my details about upcoming videos, stuff that as I'm getting it into my collection. Um, I'm working currently on a new project, so um, poly related, so feel free to come check that out over there too. Um, but that's just the best place to connect with me is on Instagram at Pocket Vintage Toys. I also have just recently made an effort to actually start using my Facebook page. So if you're on Facebook and you don't use Instagram, um, Holly Pocket Vintage Toys is my Facebook page. So feel free to go check that one out as well too. Um, I'm just reposting uh, old content at the moment, but my stories will come through from Instagram and all of my new posts to my Instagram grid will also just automatically post there. So I've finally got that all sorted out. Anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.